Hi, welcome to Petty's Crafts Creations. Thanks for joining me today and creating with me. Today I am making Christmas presents for my grandchildren and I'm doing canvas totes for them with some books that I had picked up. And I did this tote lined with this fabric here. So it's just a small tote. And then I'm going to use my Cricut to um, do an iron on for the first letter of their names. I apologize for the squeakiness of my chair. So the first thing I did was make my strap and I did one long strip and then I cut it in half. And then my fabric is just the same size all the way around, both the lining fabric and the regular fabric. And I have them facing each other. The reason I have them facing each other is I'm going to put my straps in before I put the bag together. So I'm just going to open this up here and fold that down. And I'm going to take one of my straps and create a U and just eyeball it. I want to make sure um, when I'm using my grid that I go three or four in on each side. So with this one, I'm going to go three. So one, two, three, and then I'm going to butt my strap up against that three mark there. And I'm just going to pin that in place. And I'm putting my pin on the top, and you'll see why I'm doing that in just a moment. And then I'm going to go to the opposite side and do the same thing. I'm going to butt that piece right up against that three, and place my pin there as well. So I have this bump here. I'm not worried about it because it's not going to be sewn. I'm going to take my fabric, my lining fabric. I'm just going to line that up with the edges and I'm going to pin it in place all the way across and I'm going to remove that pin that I put in my handle there. I'm just going to go all the way across with my pinning and when I come to the handle again I'm going to remove that pin, straighten my handle out if it twists on me a little bit which it tends to do because you're manipulating your fabric a little. And just go all the way to the edge with that. And then I'm going to repeat that on the opposite side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip it, grab my corners there, lay them down, fold that back again, and do the same thing. Create that U shape with the bump on the upside. And I have a little bit of thread. I'm just going to remove that on the end. And create that U again and go three in and put my pin in it. And then do the same on this side. Get that flat against there and go three in. Raise that up. And then I'm going to go ahead and pin this again, doing repeating the same process I did on the other end. Just pinning them in place, moving the handle pin. And you don't have to pin if you're comfortable with not pinning, um, go for it. I um, was taught pinning. And I've tried to do it without it. Some projects I can. Um, this, the bag making, I tend to use a lot of pins doing it. So the next step is to go ahead and sew across here and here. And I'm going to do that off camera because I don't want to have that extra noise for you. And I'll be right back. Okay, so you're going to end up with a kind of like a sandwich. Your handles are going to be on the inside. And you're going to have your bag look like this. So next we're going to take and turn it like this. Then we're going to match up our edges, the seam here on the bag, with each other. So to do that, just line up those fold lines where you sewed and put a pin in that. And then do that on the other side as well. Turn your bag. And then put a pin in that as well.
And then the next part is really easy. You just pull on both sides like so. And then you're going to pin. And the way I pin on this is I put my pins going upward. Because I'm going to sew along this line. I'm just going to have my pins go in and up. Lining up my edges of my fabric again as I go. In and up, in and up, all the way down. Removing any threads along the way. And you can see there's a little bit of a miscut here on this fabric. So I'm going to line that up. And I'm just going to cut this away. Because I, when I'm sewing it, I do not want to have that little extra and throw off my alignment of my sewing. So I'm just going to come through and cut that. So then I can even that back out and then sew that along that as well. So I'm just going to pin there. And I'm going to leave a gap on the bottom here for turning my bag. So I'm going to stop with my pin there and go down more and put that pin in. And I'm going to repeat that for the other side and then sew it and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's all sewn. Now I'm going to go and take my scissors and I'm going to put them into those corners just to get that edge separated. And I'm just going to snip that corner so it looks like this. Get my fingers in there. So your corner is going to, you want your corner separated like that. So I'm going to do all four corners and I'm not trimming the threads away. I'm going to leave those there. I'm going to do that corner there as well. And this is going to help when you go to make the edges of your bag, cutting those corners. So the next step is you want to create that boxiness. Excuse the creaking on my chair again. You want to create that boxiness here. I don't even know if that showed or not, but right here. So we want to create it, give it that um, thickness on there. So you're just going to pull your bag apart like so. Then take those flaps and those are going to create your corner. So just put a pin in that like so. And then you can pin down here as well on all fours. And then repeat that all the way around each corner of your bag. Open that little flap up. Making sure that you've got the center of your bag. You want it to line up here. So open that up. Put your pins in to the center first. That's going to hold your center point. So when you're going to sew your boxy ends, your ends will be there. And they won't get mismeasured. And I have that seam here that allows me to open the bag, half, turn the bag inside the right way when it's got the corners done. In creating this corner, it's going to make it easier for when you bring it to your sewing machine to judge how wide you want your boxy ends to be, which will determine the depth of your bag, not the depth, the width of your bag. And another way is you can take that point and line the points up to make sure that they are even with each other so like so huh. so 
So when I take it to my sewing machine next, I need to decide how deep I want this bag to be. So I'm going to use my guide here, the metal plate on my sewing machine. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but my foot guide here um, goes up to, it has a four on there, but I don't believe it's four inches because that would be like way out here. So I'm just going to use that guide and decide how far in I want my bag to be. Usually I match up with the screw on the plate with that point, which we created here, and that's why the flaps are there. They're going to show where that point is. So I'm going to line it up with however I want my bag to be, and then drop my foot down. I'm going to move my fabric out here, and I'm going to go that line right after the screw. So right there, and I'm going to drop my foot. It's in a little bit, and I'm going to back stitch. So I'm going to do that on all four corners and I'll be right back. Okay, so my corners are now cut, um, sewn all the way around. And you can choose to cut these off if you want, but I prefer to leave them in the bag because I think that they add to the strength of the bag. I'm just going to find my turn spot here. Now an easy way to do the turning is you go down to the corner on the inside, grab that corner and pull it through. That's going to help you get all that bulkiness out of the way so you don't end up ripping your stitch. So you just keep pulling it through. And I, I sometimes have pulled a stitch doing bulk waves, um, but whatever works for you. And pulling a stitch is not the end of it. Um, you can fix it by just sewing your seam a little bit further down. So I'm just trying to get that handle because that's going to help me as well. The handles are bulky, so if you can get them out first, that will help you as well turning the bag. It goes a little bit smoother with both handles. There we go. So I just shake it a little bit, get the handle on the right side there, and then I'm going to sew this seam up, I'm just going to fold it in like so, and just line that up on the edge there. I'm going to put some pins in it and then I'm going to sew this up. And I only want the pins at the beginning and the end. So that's going to tell me where I start to stitch and where I'm going to stop stitching. And I'm just going to sew along this corner here. So I'm going to do that really quick while I'm on camera. And I really do need to get a new chair. The squeakiness of it. So I'm going to start there. And I'm just going to use that pin as a guide to move my fingers. right there and then just remove the excess threads and I really like these kind of scissors here that have that bend in them I picked these up at a thrift store and they have that little bump right there and I paid 50 cents for the bag that they were in and then I did not realize what kind of scissors they were. I had to look them up by the name there. Um, where is the name? So that's the name of them there. I hope you can see it. I'm kind of in an angle on the sun on my desk right here. So that's all done. Now I'm going to turn my bag. I'm going to, by shoving all this on the inside and just shaking it a little bit and popping out those corners on each side of the bag with my liner. 
And then to finish off the bag, you don't have to do the next step, but I like to. I'm gonna sew around the whole thing just to give it that finished look. And it ends up looking like this. You have that little trim going around the whole bag. Um, it just, for me, it gives it a little bit more of a finished touch. So that is how I make the bag. Thank you for watching and have a great day.